we hold that dear to our hearts and we do everything possible to stand by those social responsibility functions. At the head of the management of the team is a brilliant young lady who knows how to marshal out management ideas. I am not surprised in any way if Chief Akunde is full of ideas at 75. You shouldn't be surprised that Chief Akunde will have children full of ideas. Ladies and gentlemen, join me to welcome the Chief Operating Officer of Spash Firm, Mrs. Oyebisi Ashimolo, Mayor Akunde. So we have to spell out the social responsibility statement of Spash Firm. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our seventh anniversary lecture. We are really glad to have you. And if I start with the end of my speech, we hope to see you again next year. <laughs> right. Unveiling Splash FM Social Responsibility Program from July 2013 to July 2014. As we all know, Splash FM has continued to blaze the trail in its social responsibility programs, and it gladdens my heart to inform you that over the last year, we have partnered with necessary awareness on many social issues, as well as sponsored many campaigns for accountability, corporate governance, and transparency. At the end of another year for Splash FM, We've recorded a boost in the station's contribution to members of staff, public service, social and corporate organizations, as well as the cultural institution in Oyo State. Splash FM social corporate, corporate social responsibility to these listed groups have shot up from 60, 40 million Naira expended last year to a total of 68.5 million Naira and more this year just ended. This, to my mind, speaks of growth. From July 2013 to date, Splash FM programs like You and the Pro Police, Health Check, Learning by Ear, BBC's Talk Your Own, and the like, aimed at public education and enlightenment, came at a cost of 52.5 million naira and counting as we speak. Splash FM has extended its duty to the society having committed an aggregate sum of 25.4 million naira to the advocacy against the HIV AIDS epidemic. We all know about the Splash FM Integrity Marathon Race. This held this year on the 23rd of March. This has furthered the much needed anti-corruption campaign in the country, we believe. The race, which is unequaled in the whole of Nigeria, has been a metaphor for probity in public service, accountability, resilience in human relations, and hard work in all life's endeavors. These listed virtues, when imbibed by all Nigerians, will make for a better society, again, we believe. To the success of this year's marathon race, Splash FM committed over 14.5 million Naira which covered the expenses and the publicity for the event. With the drive to make Splash FM, with the drive to make the Splash FM Marathon an international event, the station will be devoting even more money to the success of the race next year. We hope to see you all there. <laughs> Furthermore, as we, we place as premium the appreciation of our cultural belonging and traditional ethos. Splash FM has committed about 300,000 Naira in this last year, just ended, to campaigns that publicized and promoted the monarchical system in Ibadan land. Another 300,000 Naira has gone into the promotion of corporate societies, both at the state and the federal levels. To highlight the importance of the station attached to road safety, we have a weekly campaign program on road safety precautions for the Federal Road Safety Commission, 
which totals 4 million naira from 2013 till date. Our annual anniversary lecture, which you are in now, has contributed to several discourses that are relevant to the development of the modern African state that we desire. It is our hope that the knowledge gained from these enriching papers speak to the human mind, from which comes ideas that can change our social and material existence. Finally, Splash FM is indebted to our many customers, our friends, our well-wishers. Indeed, without your unwavering support, the tortuous road of promoting good values and advocating for good governance through our very programs would have been an impossible task. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Spurred on by the confidence which you have given us, the station promises to commit even more in cash and kind to the delivery of both public and private services for the promotion and the good of all. We appreciate you for coming to this year's lecture. And our prayer is that we will have life long enough to attend next year's lecture. Thank you. Can we please give a round of applause again to my school? Notice that she calmly delivered her speech. She's not that calm. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, also part of this event this morning as a Nigerian who has contributed in no small measure to the economic development of this country. One of the foremost legal practitioners in Nigeria, an industrialist. Let me stop there. Ladies and gentlemen, join me to welcome Chief Kola Daisi. I can see him sitting first. I must say, I like where he's sitting. At least the aura is well spread. So thank you for coming this morning. Also seated on the high table are the in-laws of Splash FMCO. And ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome Mr. and Mrs. Hashimolo. Thank you for coming, ma'am. Thank you for coming, sir. We are there. In 2008, it was retired Justice Emmanuel Ayola, the then chairman of the Independent Corrupt Practices and other related offenses commission, that delivered the Splash FM first anniversary lecture. In 2009, it was Professor Adito Kumba Lucas, an adjunct professor of population and international health at Harvard School of Public Health. The topic was rebranding the Nigerian health services for people to feel better and live longer. In 2010, we decided to move the subject to another angle. Then we brought Dr. Yemi Farumbi, a veteran broadcaster. At the time, he was the chairman board of the Oshu State Broadcasting Corporation. Today, Professor Dr. Yemi Farumbi is Nigeria's ambassador to the Philippines. Those of you that have met Yami Farumbi is known for his gray beards. He looks serene, brilliant. And the subject of that 2010 lecture was broadcasting as a cornerstone of democracy. And that is the truth. Broadcast
broadcasting is a cornerstone of democracy. The essence of broadcasting is to put in the public domain democratic ideas. And when these ideas are not being followed, it's the responsibility of a broadcasting outfit to state it clearly. And Professor Yami Farumbi did not fail in spreading out that function of broadcasting when he delivered his lecture in 2010. In 2011, we had cause to bring a renowned professor, one of the best anywhere in the world, a professor emeritus, Akim Abudia, a former dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences, University of Ibadan. It is important to note here that Professor Mabu Buje became the first African in 1999 to be elected Foreign Associate of the United States National Academy of Science. For the United States to recognize your intellectual capacity, you must be very good. And Mabu Buje titled his lecture, Promoting Good Governance, What Can We, the People Do? That lecture touched on salient points about the failure of the Nigerian people to stand and say this is what we want. That lecture touched on the docility of Nigerians. The half the time has come for you to begin to understand that power belongs to the people. You can do whatever you like with it and make sure that the power you give are not misused. That was what Professor Mabu Buje taught us in 2011. In 2012, we went all the way to River State to bring Leiden meeting. If you are a student of history, you will learn that there was Yoguninna, led by Ken Sarawiwa. Abacha could not cope with them in Ogunina and decided to send them to their early graves. Ken Salawiwa was killed, but only one of them survived. That was Ledon Miti, who later became the president of the movement for the survival of the Ogoni people. Ledon Miti came to Ibadan in 2012. On this stage, he told us the story of oil in the Niger Delta and how government has misused natural resources over the years. That lecture still lingers in my mind. And one point he touched on that day was the struggle that led to the Yoguri fights between the people and the merchant. It's a lecture you can get. If you want, you can request it. You can always send it to your email. And that lecture reminds us of the poems and books of Ken Sarawiwa. If you've not read a book by Ken, go look for it, A Forest of Flowers, short stories. It will take you a long way. In 2013, on the stage, we brought Professor Akidide Oshutoku, a professor emeritus of the University of Lagos, a professor of international relations, and a member of the Presidential Council on International Affairs. He touched on the topic, the place of the Yoruba in the ethno-political configuration of Nigeria. And that is one of the points still being discussed at the National Conference. You need to have a copy of that lecture. What we do in picking our guest speakers is to go through some of the points they have made in the past and see how qualitative these points are. We don't just speak. We follow your antecedents. Remember, Splash FM is the integrity station, and nothing has changed. So for 2014, For 2014, we also followed that same criteria to pick our best speaker. I listened to the chairman of the event make certain points about Africa. 
And I kept asking myself, what will Dr. Anthony Mario tell us this afternoon? I read an article entitled The End of History, written in 2007, in 1987 by Francis Fukuyama. In that article, Francis Fukuyama said that we have come to the end point of ideology, that therefore that democratic elections, liberalization and capitalism is the end of ideology. And it took us to the words of Hegel, who also made that point in the 19th century. While I was contemplating, I decided to go through the works of Simon Huntington and try to the Clash of Civilization. In the Clash of Civilization, that scholar made a point that conflicts in the world will no longer be driven by issues of economy, but by cultural issues. And the cultural issues he mentioned include globalization of terrorism. I'm beginning to fit into the Huntington School. America came with the globalization of capitalism. But somebody is saying that when there is globalization of capitalism, you should expect fragmentation. And what he called it is the globalization of terrorism. <laughs> is that what Anthony Marigo is going to change? Remember, it is error in terror. Is that what he's going to talk about? <laughs> Who is Dr. Anthony Marie? I'll call my colleague Jacob Adeyemi to tell us about it. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Our guest on the high table. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, Dr. I want you to stand up, please. I want you to stand up. Um, Permit me to call you by name this afternoon, sir. Tony Mario, a medical doctor and obstetrician and a gynecologist practicing in Ibadan. This doctor has a Nigerian paternal and Irish maternal parentage, if you can look at him well. <laughs> at uh, Yaba Primary School and Gregory's College, Ikui Lagos, where he became the head boy in 1967. He went to the University of Ibadan in 1968 to study medicine, winning several prizes, and he served as a National Youth Service Corps member in Plateau State, that's far up just, and of course, Lafia, where he wrote his first book, that's The Victim. Dr. Mario later did postgraduate training at the University College Hospital here in Nevada and briefly in King's College Hospital, far away London. He worked at um, Oluyuru Catholic Hospital for five years and is now a private practice in the wide field of ultrasound. He is the past Secretary General of the Nigerian Medical Association or your state branch and has over 50 academic publications in journals and an ultrasound chapter in the OMG. There's more to it. He has played an active role in the Association of Nigerian Authors. He's the author of several novels and three collections of poetry, you know, a mixed collection of short stories and poetry, numerous short stories and poems and other collections. Now, his historical play, Why You I, was successfully performed here at, uh, at the Theatre Arts of the University of Ibadan sometime in 1999. Also an environmental book, Tell It to the President. It's in the school's book list, you'll find it there. Now, other publications, other publications include books for children, that's The Many-Sided Coin, Bobo Learns to Fly, Fly rather, Bobo and the Crying Crab, a set of three eight stories for children, The Flight, The Homework, and The Healer's Mistake. Youth and adult books include novels, uh, Deadly Cargo, The Epidemic, Nene and Other Stories, a book of short stories. Poetry books include The Menopause, an illustrated poem, Objection, Engraved, Hope's Wristwatch, 
a collection of short stories and poems on the literate road, a travel or Ode to Africa illustrated by Eoka Aga. No Time to Blink is a CD of poetry to music. Other non-literature books include Educate Trust, that's the handbook of education in the new millennium, his book and numerous essay, lectures, and keynote addresses, including the Obafemi Aula Foundation lecture and single short stories and poems in several anthologies, including in A City by the Lagoon editor Odai Ofiome, Ofiome rather. He's a social commentator, writing weekly for many years in the press, particularly on Wednesdays in the nation on topical issues and frequently addresses public and media fora on medical, social, and other motivational issues. He funded with others an education and health use-based NGO called Educare Trust, which through its literature and policy initiatives and influences has impacted positively on the non-academic lives of many millions of youth and adults. The dreams of Youth Inspiration Exhibition Centers and Museum in every neighborhood in Africa. That is in every neighborhood and town in Africa. Dedicated to empowering the youth and giving opportunities and exposing, entertaining, and inspiring youth talent and entrepreneurship. He's an avid photographer of nature and scenes in his spare time. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Anthony Mario. So that is Jacobs. Hey. It's wonderful to put a, a face to a name that you know so well. Uh, distinguished residents of the high table, I will single out the chairman of Splash FM, Chief Akonde. I will single out Chief Lekonare. I will single out Professor Ayobanjo because he's chairman of Educare Trust. And I will single out the representative of government because he's my classmate from St. Gregory's College. And I will single out Professor Idoja because without him I would not have learned any medicine. Because now I will not come here. And I will single out Dr. Um, Chief Aiku because he was my, my father-in-law's lawyer. Thank you, sir. I think uh, everybody remained except Francis. I will deal with him later. But, uh, and of course, uh, Bayo and I were class work, friends and classmates in the University of Ibadan many years ago, sir. And we're always in touch, so thank you very much, sir. God bless. Slide two, please. The error in terror is that human beings are not born to live in terror and fear, but to live in peace, justice, and love. Goodness lasts forever, but terror never lasts. Terror has no cause except greed. No other cause, only greed, beyond human need to acquire the material and mental necessities of others their property, their person, and their votes. Our terror continues since most politicians serve self over service, paying themselves more than they deserve, and they take powers beyond their authority. That is the definition of terror. A nation which questions its coach more than its politicians has a big, big problem. Maybe we should go to half time, during half time, and discuss the politics during half time. Next slide, please. The 15th of April 2014 will go down in the history of Nigeria as the day of the Chibok kidnapping. 84, 85 days later, we are still asking, where are our girls? The error in that terror is that it has managed to alienate almost the whole world against the people, the perpetrators. And the lesson is a country which fails its children, fails the test of civilization. Because in civilized, civilized society looks after its children. 
Is traditional customary respect detrimental to youth development and the ability of the youth to take center stage? What is a youth? Young Nigerians are killed every day in the pursuance of their duties as policemen and the military. Can you say that they are youth in the real definition of the word? They have died. They have completed their lives. They took decisions to, to put themselves on the line to die. And you call that person a youth, as if he doesn't have a brain, as if he doesn't have something to say, as if he cannot contribute to your society. But he has contributed five liters of his blood. And he's in a coffin somewhere. And you won't even pay his wife's pension. Back one. Are youth are in search of jobs? Nigeria's portals are jobs for Nigeria's citizens. We've, done, we've succeeded in comedy, but there are jobs in many other areas. Intelligence is a big area, but the judiciary is another area. If you want to move forward as a nation, we must computerize the judicial system. There will have to be IT graduates in every magistrate's court. There will even require to be one in every police station. That is where the jobs are. There should be a photographer resident in every police station. Because when you come in without bruises and you leave with bruise, there must be evidence now. Next slide, please. The error in terror is shown by the comment of a man after the 23rd of July bombing in Abuja. I lost my driver for a 10 Naira photocopy. That is the error in terror. That driver, the man said, had three wives and eight children. We all heard it on the news. It wasn't, I didn't invent it. The, the examples of terror, the Fulani herdsman has killed 20 to 50 people a day for the past five years. Nobody noticed. You get the reports every day. The press say, ah, my show, ah, 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 ah. Add them up. There are thousands of people. And yet we still eat and do not fast from the meat of cows, fed on the feed stained with the blood of those farmers. That is called blood meat. You have heard of blood diamonds. You have heard of blood oil. Add blood meat and enjoy your lunch. The Apache terror is another example. It really angers us because we all remember it. And it's an easy example because it has legal backing. So we, when we quote it, we know we are saying things that are correct. And there are returned millions of Naira out of it. And of course, after a bargain with a son. Nigerians are rich in power, but poor in principle. The Abacha kleptomania should be studied as the major error in terror. Because it deprived every single living child today of his heritage because that government money was supposed to be used for the development of his of those children's parents and that money disappeared we know of abachas in every state and local government also terror comes with a smiling face not everybody who is a terrorist where, where's goggles oh, Abhi? where's uh, where's uh, abacha goggles but they can smile toothily and even talk progressively while they're stealing our inheritance. As you watch the World Cup final coming up this week, whose hand is creating terror in your local government treasury? Next slide, please. How can we get to this unpass? How did we get to this unpass as a potentially great na nation? It's not because great people did not speak out. Silence has never been a national Nigerian problem. All the carbon dioxide produced by talking, talking, talking has contributed to global warming. <laughs> but here's a cause without an effect. I won't go, I won't go. How many Nigerians have paid the price of protest? Do you remember those who died during the Abiola five months? Nobody remembers them now. Nobody remembers their children. I know of no state, even in the Southwest, who says there is a foundation for survivors of the Abiola um, um, five months uh, uh, a struggle. That if you can prove your father died in that struggle, we are going to give you a scholarship. Come and take it. We will give you a job. We will make sure you are all right. Not even in the progressive states. So why would anybody want to die for this country? Why? So, 
The effects of terror include alienation and deprivation.